hello everybody um welcome back to the channel so today let's talk about politics for a bit um and we'll be focusing today on um eastern europe you know regarding the tension between russia and ukraine and as we've known we've read in the news of oh, russia is going to invade ukraine russia is going to invade ukraine although some of us who have been reading the news some of us had a uh, different point of view from what has been you know um um broadcasted by the mainstream media so for us and um for the likes of us who say things differently although like we'll just take the as the go saying go one of the united states president that says trust was verified yes we trust intelligence coming out but then we also need to look at the other part of it so regarding ukraine and russia now um in another video i will you know try to tell us um, why and what has been going on with these two nations they are brother nations they're sister nations they have history together and um, they have um, family ties cultural ties and all of that but in there now let's look at a country like ukraine india in, in ukraine you have russian speaking ukraine people okay russian speaking people who are in who are native in ukraine you have ukrainian speaking people with that geographical lo um, location uh, and then um, you have um um you have polish speaking people and different other minorities who are who speak different languages there yeah even hungarian people i mean there about yeah you have them there now in that same ukraine um they had in 2014 they had a a Maidan um, revolution or a coup, I call that a coup. We don't call it a revolution because we call it a coup because judging by what happened, so whereby Viktor Yanukovych was being thrown out of office by a coup. So now there are groups of people who supported that coup and there are groups of people who said no, they are against that coup. Whatever that is to happen, let it be done democratically, which is fine and welcome by all, you know, and I mean we all love democracy who doesn't um until we see the other negative aspects of democracy then we would then tend to have a, a different point of view when it comes to that so now on that aspect now um just giving us a brief rundown okay now you have the russian speaking people said okay but let it be done democratically now the ukrainian speaking people you have the far right people the nationalist people the new the the new nazi sympathizers people like you have the azov battalion and the rest of them who were like uh-uh no we gotta do this um but then the other said okay before i know it the crimean people who said well we want something that is not going to be catastrophic you know because of them wanting to join eu wanting to join nato now if we say we want democracy which is whatever that is done democratically should be subject to a referendum or a voting system and now um they never voted to support to join eu it wasn't brought into them as a referendum right and it wasn't brought to them as a referendum to join um nato now this was imposed on them by some groups and while well, there's some groups who refuse to it well you say democracy majority have their way um they are say their way or they are say depending on uh, the cost of the minority that is what the calls to tell us about democracy but to me i believe democracy should be like a kind of a negotiation part of thing you hear the concerns of other people other ethnic groups that are in the in geographical location called ukraine so now if you say that people who are in um, Crimea they are ethnic Russians okay they said well we're not gonna join this, uh, an organization that will um, be you will be now be used as a to target our kit and kin they decided to conduct a referendum and they voted to join Russia mind you this referendum was covered by so many independent observers there's one um, um news um, um media western u.s news media called vice news i'll put in the link on the description so you can go there and see i watched the whole videos different episodes it was done without sh without a shot and crimea decided to vote in favor of russia now you have the lugans and the donyx people's republic who decided to say well we want our own autonomy 
an independent country. And they, they vowed to join Russia. They had a referendum and the rest of that. Russia was like, no, no, no. Let's sort this out of the premise of negotiation. But then you have the, 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 the far right people in the Ukraine who said, no, they don't want to know negotiation. Whatever we say is what you must do. But if you say we all believe in democracy, well, I think we should listen to them. We should hear what they have to say. But then it's just by the way. Don't mind you. I'm just a regular guy on YouTube. Um, not a, not a journalist. I'm just a commentary. I'm just making commentary based off of what is out there in the public domain. So fast forward to the event. They had a, a mis agreement, and the mis agreement actually gave this gave these two um, regions autonomy, but they will still be in Ukraine, but they'll be autonomous. Okay, which is fine. Now, fast forward. You had um, Poroshenko who came in as a president. Okay. Now, after Poroshenko, you have um, Volodymyr Zelensky. Now, Volodymyr Zelensky, let me tell you on this, just a short, on, on the short part. On his own part, he was like, okay, he had run a campaign of negotiation and bringing back Donbass into the fold. When I mean Donbass, I mean the fold, the, um, the People's Republic of the Lugans and the Donetsk Republic. That's what I mean by Donbass. So negotiation, bringing them back into the fold. And he never complained on the use of any military force or anything. Negotiation, which is fine and welcome by the rest of us because we don't want war. We don't know what we want crisis. We've had enough of crisis from COVID and the rest of that. So now, but looking at the whole situation, um, well, he went around the campaign, but then his hands were tied and he was forced into going into the aggressive um, mode of getting the People's Republic of Donetsk and Lugansk back. Okay, now fast forward, they had the, you know, back shellings back and forth, each side denies and okay, it's none of our business. Now, um, apart from that, they had a mix agreement. The mix agreement should be implemented. And he said, okay, he will implement this agreement. Now, one year passed, two years passed. What happened? Why haven't he implemented this mix agreement? Why? You cannot say, okay, you want to join EU, you want to join NATO. But these two regions say they don't want none of that. They want to be neutral. They want to live their life and practice and speak their language. Mind you, um, um, Poroshenko passed an Ukrainianization law whereby they will scrap anything that has to do with Russia, change cities' names that had Russian um, um, names to um, Ukraine, and you speak their language. But this is undemocratic. It's not like you're trying to force them into slavery well for me being african i understand what the effects of slavery and what it could do and these people do not want that they want to be practice their language and their culture and they don't want any interference which is fine and welcome by the which is the provision that is being provided by the you know by the concept of democracy okay let's look at that let's keep that on the side after back and forth negotiations the western powers started to send um military aid to Ukraine. Well, that was, to me, I felt that that was a wrong move because um, it would have been a way that there's other ways to, to get those two republics back into Ukraine. It would have been by implementing that misagreement and then you work with them, work with them, work with them, and then you have the other side. Okay, but since it's like this, well, we all know Crimea is gone, it's not coming back, and these two regions, they're on their way out and they're not gonna come back Okay, now after these two regions, are there other, other regions in Ukraine that would want to join their Russian folks? Oh yeah, there are three other states that would want to join. I won't go into names, uh, into mentioning those names, but if we look at it this way, I think, um, fast forward, fast forward, Putin um, carried out his exercise and the rest of them did the exercise. Well, we all know that Russia wasn't going to invade Ukraine forcefully but indirectly um, he's gonna they're gonna do it indirectly so now what happened fast forward today president president putin started to recognize those two regions as independent well you, you then the russia has been threatened with sanction well i don't know how that would hold water because democracy the will of the people the people decided to be independent are you gonna force them back oh no that will be that will be like the Western government shooting themselves on the foot. If you sanction Russia because of the recognized the, the will of the people, democratic will of the people to be independent, well, 
that is democracy that we're being preached, that we're being taught, then let it be democracy. Let the people have their say. They want to practice their language, allow them. Well, it's just what I have to say now. I don't, I'm just a random guy on YouTube. Thank you for listening and um, welcome back to the channel. As always, now we'll be talking more about politics and economics and, you know, lifestyle in general. Thank you once again. You're welcome back to the channel. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.